Good afternoon again, Tube of Use. Um, so yeah, I've been a little bit absent, been doing stuff, actually been taking some videos, and uh, you guys will see some of my autocrossing stuff pop up from time to time. I'm not going to bore you guys and, and just uh, upload that all at once, but in the meantime, you see we are not at the shop. Um, it has now gotten a little too cold, my heater won't keep up with an uninsulated shop, even though I have taken strips of carpet and hung it all around the door, yada yada yada. As usual, I am making this much longer than it really needs to be. So, let's get to the meat and potatoes. I've got something in here that uh, I don't generally get to see. Got an old Dodge. Uh, I believe this one's a 76, got a 440 in it. Um, basically, it's a no-start condition. Was running, quit running. These are incredibly simple. Uh, with the exception of, you know, people that overlook the, uh, whatever they call that. It's a, what I would call an ignition control module, but the igniter module, or whatever you want to call it, um, is pretty prone to failure in these. But, um, or, shit. I'm not even pointing at the right part. Excuse me. But, uh, at any rate, um, I doubt that that is the case on this one. Um just given the story and the people. So, at any rate, I figured that this would be a good time to do a really simple and rudimentary video on if you've got a basic, simple, carbureted vehicle that does not start, you know, if it comes in with a crank, no start uh, condition, there's a couple of things that you can do, uh, you know, with a tool that costs you about seven bucks and a can of gas, that'll tell you really quick at least which direction to, uh, to point your diagnostics in. Um, I apologize, this video will be a little bit under a lot of the people that watch my videos, but all the same, it's something that I've never really seen covered on YouTube before. So, I figured, you know, maybe I could just do a quick and dirty, because I'm sure there's people out there that are dragging something out of the weeds and just want to hear it run for the first time, and, and uh, you know, and maybe there's some people that have got an old carbureted vehicle that just won't start and they don't know what direction to go, and so just a couple of quick and simple tips to kind of tell you if you have what you need to, uh, to proceed and make a vehicle run. So without further ado, let's get to it. So like I said, we're gonna keep this really simple. First thing I'm gonna do is verify that we got spark. And there's a tool that I pretty much carry with me everywhere I go. Anytime I'm dealing with a no start condition on a gas motor and uh, obviously you have to have a source of ignition for the fuel that is being pumped into the motor. This little spark tester new hickey right here. This is my favorite one. There's a multitude of different styles. This is the one that I found to be, you know, just the easiest to use. They're about seven or eight bucks, I think, um, if even that much. Uh, and I actually have several of these. I even carry one in my pickup that I drive around just in case I get called out to work on a beat truck or something. Basically the way it works, and uh, obviously you gotta make sure you got a good battery or juice, and for those of you working on older cars, make sure that you're uh, not working on a six volt system where 12 volt has been, 12 volt battery has been installed, et cetera, et cetera, but I am babbling. So, obviously, make sure you got 12 volts and that the engine will actually crank. Um, hook up your handy dandy spark tester, and crank the motor and you guys should see that we have spark el sparko sparky sparky um so the next thing you do where i mentioned the uh the uh can of gas um is just to verify if you got spark and uh and it's still not cranking, then you're short either one of the other two components. <clears throat> and then sometimes it can get a little bit more complicated than that. Just because you have spark does not mean it's sparking at the right time and that it will hit. But this simple procedure right here, can of gas, let me dump a slug in this thirsty old girl. It is a 440 and it does have a drinking problem. They all did. And this will tell you if you got spark at the right time and uh, we'll also kind of confirm whether or not you have fuel up to the carburetor or at least fuel getting through the carburetor, etc., etc. And as 
as you can see, we have life. So what we can confirm from that is because there is nothing popping back through the carburetor um, or popping out the exhaust, that we can kind of make a general assumption that the uh, that the distributor is timed roughly in the in the proper area. Now, also, I know that this pickup ran. I'd seen this pickup running around town. It's my cousin's, in fact. Um, you know, before uh, you know, it just decided not to run. Um, you don't typically see a fuel pump failure in a fashion that it just all of a sudden quits. Usually, you know, they'll start to weep out the weep hole. There will be a puddle of fuel underneath the, uh, uh, what people will call the witness hole, what I call the weep hole. Um, but on occasion, they do. This pickup, it also bears mentioning, is equipped with dual tanks. Hey, come out of there. Is equipped with dual tanks. So that also could be a culprit that, uh, that we need to, to be mindful of. Now, once again, just because you, you put gas in the carburetor and the vehicle fires up does not necessarily mean that the fuel pump has failed or that you're not getting fuel to the carburetor. Could be that uh, that you got, uh, I've even had, I guess I've, I've even had situations where the fuel system has drained back. Um, you could have a check valve bad, draining back, it has to prime itself up. And sometimes if you give that a couple of shots like that, it will eventually pump some fuel up. Um, could also be dealing, like I said, with uh, with the switching valve in the tanks. Um, once again, don't really think that that's the issue, but you also could be dealing with plug jets. So the next thing we do need to find out is if there is fuel getting from the fuel from the tanks to the carburetor. If there is, then we suspect a carburetor problem. If there is not, then we go further down the line. Basically, you you make a an arrow and you start here and then you go to here and then to here and then to here and then to here um, so I will show you really quick just what to do here so that uh, we can figure out if we've got fuel up to thine carburetor now I will spoiler alert here um, I have already checked this thing out know where we're going um, but for the sake of showing you guys, I'm redoing some steps. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to look and see, watch that uh, that fuel fitting that I just pulled off, and we're going to look and see if we got any gas spraying out of it. And the answer is a new. So. The next step is to go downstream <clears throat> into the fuel system. One of the things that I'm going to do here is I will take the, the line from the tanks off of the fuel pump. These tanks should be high enough and this fuel line should be low enough that we should be able to get a gravity feed um, if there's nothing wrong with the tanks. That's not always a guaranteed. One of the things that you can do if you're careful is take a little bit of air. I think you guys have probably seen me do actually probably most of these steps in one of my videos at one point in time but this is the first time I've combined them all in kind of an informational setting um, but take the fuel line off at the fuel pump just lightly blow some air into the tank you don't want to swell the tank or burst lines or anything like that but uh, but yeah just blow a little bit in and see if you can actually get fuel to come to flow to the fuel pump if you cannot then that would be a good time to check for obstructions in the lines, uh, plugged sock, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you can, then it's pretty easy to assume that it's a fuel pump. But one thing you want to make sure of when diagnosing a fuel pump is that the, uh, the eccentric is not spinning on the camshaft or the crank or wherever the concentric, yeah, the eccentric. Somebody please correct me on that. Is it a concentric or is it an eccentric that drives a, uh, a fuel pump? Because um, I don't know the specific terminology there. I, I think it's called an eccentric, but I'm not sure. I think maybe I might just be eccentric, but that's a different word. Uh, anyways, enough of my babbling. You have to make sure that there is an eccentric there in order to, uh, to drive the pump arm. I can actually show you that here in a bit. I may or may not. But... Um, at any rate, I'm reasonably certain that we're going to end up putting a fuel pump in it, but in an effort of not just being a parts changer, we want to make sure we go through the proper steps of diagnosing things 
so that we make sure that we replace the right part the first time, not just replace parts in an effort to make something better. Um, which works, but it gets expensive, as many people will probably be able to tell you. So, on to it, we're going to go ahead and replace the fuel pump in this big old gas guzzling 440, and we'll see where we go from there. So, uh, hang tight, we'll be back with you in a moment. So, what we got going on here is going to be either an obstruction in the line or problems in the switching valve, etc., etc. So I guess for tonight, we're probably done. Um, and until another video, do all of the youtuber -y things that you have been doing thus far. Rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned to see if we can make this pile of Dodge run and work. Later.